Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. Uh, I stand before you in my personal capacity and not as recently appointed <coughs> Commissioner of United States Commission on International Religious Freedom by President Biden. I didn't want to burden our host um, with all the reporting and all uh, formalities. Uh, hence, I stand before you in my personal capacity. Honorable friends in the audience, thank you. Families, thank you. Um, Congressman, thank you for giving us bipartisan infrastructure bill with President Biden. We are grateful to you. Thank you. <laughs> Our elected official among us, you are among friends. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for making the difference in our lives, in lives of your constituents. Uh, I'm grateful to Dr. Mahmoud Alam, uh, Professor Faizan, uh, Dr. Ajaz Ahmed, Aisha Kelly, and our friends at uh, APNA and its leadership, and other friends and supporters. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. And uh, to APPAC for being the voice of the community. Uh, today my comments are focused on service, service to our country, service to our community. It's a Muslim heritage. Service to your community is a Muslim heritage. I will explain how you and all of us have adopted this mission of service to our country and are exponentially raising the voice and place of our community in this country. You recently heard from the governor of New Jersey, from Senator Cory Booker, uh, Senator Menendez, and all acknowledging the contribution that this community at large is making. Because when much is given by this country to us, much is expected from us. Let me explain. Please make a note. In 1882, there was an act titled Chinese Exclusion Act, meaning all Chinese must be thrown out of this country after their hard work in building the infrastructure, the railroads, and the, and the highway system. Then came 1942, Japanese-American internment executive order. Japanese-American men, fathers, brothers, sons were fighting in Second World War alongside the American forces and their families were interned in the United States. When it all ended, this nation recognized the mistake that was made and President Truman said to them, you fought not only the enemy, but you fought prejudice, and you won. Keep up the fight, and we will continue to win. And we also pay tribute to our African-American brothers and sisters for their continuous struggle to gain equal dignity in our country. We are proud of you. I was
was amazed to see how Catholic Americans, there is a purpose why I am citing these examples and I'll explain. Catholics were declared spies of the Pope and a demand was made that we should throw all Catholics in the ocean to get rid of them. Irish Americans were purposely forbidden to gain any employment except janitorial work. But look what happened. These communities realized that there is only one way to come out of this difficulty. And that realization was to unite, to come together. And look what happened. Within 30 years of that realization by Catholic Americans, by Irish Americans, first Irish American president was elected John F. Kennedy. That is what community organizations, community organization can do, coming together can do, working together can do. Uh, let me give you the impact of the organization like APPAC and the communities that are coming together. Uh, prior to 2016, nationwide, we had only about 50 candidates for all political offices, local, state, and national. Muslim participation since 2016 has increased exponentially. How your participation and service is making positive difference in where we stand today. There are many candidates, many local elected officials among us. And how Muslim American narrative has shifted in the last few years and how to claim our full citizenship by service to our country, by participation in the democracy of our nation. Most of you are aware and witness to rampant Islamophobia after September 11, 2001 in the U.S. and around the world. We as American Muslims withstood the violations of our civil rights, human rights, human dignities guaranteed in our Constitution and to some degree still observe these violations throughout the country. Let's see how we as Americans responded. That is why I was citing Chinese Exclusion Act, Japanese Internment Executive Order, treatment of uh, uh, Irish Americans, Catholic Americans, African Americans. This is how you have made the difference, your hard work, AP PAC's hard work, APNA's hard work, is making the difference. Note these numbers now, because some of the candidates, some of the officials are among us today. In, in 2020, last election, the numbers are out now, 170 Muslim American candidates ran for political offices. versus less than 50 in 2016 and about same in 2018. So 170 Muslim candidates ran for political offices and some of the brave leaders are among us today, tonight. 22, listen to these numbers. These are very telling of your hard work, what community organization, what standing what leading the community by organizations like EpiPAC can do. 22 ran for congressional districts in 14 states in 2020 election. 
five made to the general election and three were elected and they sit in the Congress today. 48 Muslims ran for state representatives and in 22 states with 23 winning with six made history as first Muslim to be elected in a state office. Today, today we have 17 Muslim Americans serving in local political offices including city mayors and city councils and some of those brave leaders are among us today in this hall. In other municipal elections, 33 incumbents were re-elected. These are American Muslims. No one losing their seat. Six ran for judicial seats with four winning and one federal district judge, as it was mentioned earlier, was appointed from New Jersey. First Muslim American on the federal judiciary. Keep these numbers that are narrated in mind. And you remember the Muslim ban of January 2017. Yours truly was the first Muslim American to file an amicus brief individually challenging the Muslim ban executive order by the previous administration. Though the result the result was not in my favor, but we were heard in the highest court of our country. I narrate this to remind us that each one of us within our capacity, wherever we are, whatever stage, whatever platform we have in our life, we can make the difference. Other communities have done to rise the occasion after difficulty. And we are doing, as I narrated these numbers. So I remind all of us, please remain engaged with organizations like Happy Pack to serve your community, register yourself, your family, and friends to vote, be candidates for elected office, volunteer for municipal boards, and communities locally and statewide, that is where you can make the difference. You can be the voice for your community, for your country, for your state. This is how you remain relevant. Thank you. This is how you remain relevant. Your voice is heard. You serve our democracy, our constitution by full participation. Never hesitate. This is how you serve our constitution, our democracy. Support Muslim American candidates running for political offices. You have other political officials, elected officials with us tonight. Make friends with them. Get to know them. Volunteer for their candidacy. Volunteer for their political campaigns contribute to their political campaigns. Let me share a personal story. Sale of U.S. Constitution and registration to vote nationwide. Everybody saw when we went to speak at the Democratic National Convention. Two weeks afterward, I received a letter from Amazon. I have kept it and I very proudly mentioned that whenever there is an opportunity. The letter said, Mr. Khan, thank you for speaking of U.S. Constitution, a Pakistani Muslim American. Thank you for, thank you for speaking for the Constitution of United States. Since we started printing the U.S. Constitution in the history of this country, there had not been an occasion where so many copies of the Constitution were sold within overnight. And voting registration 
increased exponentially. I got the number, how many, candy, how many voters registered immediately after we spoke at the convention. And the reason I mention this is not to be immodest. I say this to share with you that all of us can, within our capacity, can make the difference in this country, in our country. One last thing. Our youth is among us. Our future leaders need to step forward in this journey of our country. And my peers, our elders, I ask you, you must let our youth rise to the occasion. Allow them to sow. They are our future. One former Japanese-American senator told me when I went to speak at, in Seattle at a Densho, which is organization of the Japanese-American veterans of Second World War, I saw so many youth folks in the audience. I asked him, what is this interest in our youth, in your youth of this community? And he said that, after all the difficulty that we went through, we realized that the future belongs to our youth. We began to train them, to do the fundraising, to participate in political campaigns, to register our community to vote, volunteer for political campaigns, and that is how we trained them. So I urge my peers, our elders among us, let our young folks so let them make the decision let them lead so henceforth our mission is to serve our communities our state our nation and our democracy our constitution by becoming fully engaged citizens so when history is written we will be remembered as we talk about other communities today. So when the history is written, we will be remembered as most patriotic citizens who serve this nation under very difficult circumstances. Serving in any capacity is a Muslim tradition and establish and establishes all of us as productive participants in building our country, our children's country. Thank you very much. May God bless you.